What's up guys, Max here and welcome back to my dungeon. Yesterday I finally had time to prepare this old beast. Uh, this is a face change cooler. I made a full video about it. You can check it on the red card above or in the link in the description below. And uh, well, this is an extreme overclocking cooling. I can go down uh, like uh, minus 50 and uh, well, cool the CPU, uh, play with it, uh, do some score or whatever. Uh, well, usually I use liquid nitrogen, this is just for fun. And uh, I'm hoping to be able to turn it correctly and made, uh, uh, make a new series of video like uh, uh, I bring down the CPU at uh, negative 50, I push really high clocks uh, and do some benchmark or just playing games. Uh, well, let me know if, if you like the idea. Anyway, uh, yesterday I attempted to fix it. There was uh, like um, a hole in a, in a tube uh, inside uh, the, the face change and I had to brace with the soldering and everything. So it took me like uh, five hours to do a proper job. And today I checked and it's leak free, so I don't have any leaks anymore. And I recharge the, the, with the gas. And uh, today I'm going to finish the tuning, so I, won't, I, I will need to put more gas inside of it in a way that uh, uh, I will find a balance between the maximum negative temperature I can with uh, uh, enough uh, heat load to be able to sustain a CPU under uh, stress. So uh, let's get to it. What I'm gonna do now is uh, to mount the evaporator. This is called the evaporator. So it's like a big fridge where all the cooling power is concentrated here that uh, will cool down the CPU. So I will mount this. Uh, well, I will log into Windows, start some stress test, uh, uh, heat a bit uh, this uh, 11600K. So uh, I don't need uh, uh, a really heavy load since I have the big cascade that can go minus 100 uh, with big CPUs. Uh, I just need this to have some fun, so I want to find a good balance. So I will use uh, this CPU that can generate a, an interesting amount of heat, but uh, well, this will be for gaming and stuff like that. So no really heavy load, but uh, able to push a bit the clock. So anyway, uh, I will mount everything now. Uh, keep in mind that if you want to do, if you want to try something like this, you have to properly insulate the motherboard. Uh, my motherboard is really insulated in the back. I have a neoprene foam. Uh, then I will use this diaper to catch uh, eventual water or condensation. And this will go like this to insulate uh, the socket area. So, okay, let's um, mount everything. I will start the system and then I will start uh, clocking or doing something in uh, Windows. I will turn this on and we will see uh, how much gas uh, I need to put this on. So it's the first time that I recharge uh, a face cooling like this. So, uh, well, I hope that uh, everything is going to turn out good and if you're watching this video it's because I didn't blow up and I'm still safe and sound. So let's uh, uh, start uh, pulling this thing together. Right, sorry for the noise, but uh, well, I cannot do much about that. So, as you can see here, we are at uh, negative 52 degrees. The CPU is overclocked at 5 gigahertz and 44 the ring at uh, 1.5 volt. This is uh, more or less uh, what I'm going to do now to test at 1.5 volt. I don't want to go much uh, above that since I probably generate a lot of heat, and uh, well, I don't need this to be tuned for high core count CPU. So what I'm going to do now is launch some Cinebench, do some tests and see if uh, and how much the temperature will drop. If I see that the temperature will drop, I simply just add the gas. I'm using the this one, the R404A. This is a nice gas, a bit expensive, but it's not flammable, so it's not dangerous. Otherwise, I will have, I will blow up every day. But anyway, so it's not dangerous. Is uh, is a bit expensive, like five uh, kilograms uh, is more or less like 150 euros. So, well, I, I can recharge a lot, I can build some more units if I want, but yes, it's expensive, but 
most important for me that it's not dangerous. So, um, okay, I start testing, and if I see the temperature will drop too much, I will add refrigerant uh, with this uh, with this thing here. Okay, so now I'm going to start to stressing a bit and see if we can turn it to stay more or less at 50, negative 50 degrees. Okay, the temperature seems yes, as you can see, it's going down. 45, 44, that's not what I want. So I want it to stay, I would like to stay at uh, like negative 50 degrees. Because now we don't have much uh, gas, much coolant to be able to transfer all the heat inside uh, the beast. So what we are going to do now is to add the refrigerant. So the refrigerant can go inside here, go in the in the evaporator and take away the heat back into the cycle so as you can see negative 17 running a benchmark with the cpu at 5 gigahertz so it's not too much usually when this was working what looks like negative 50 uh, easily with this overclock okay so the test is done and i'm going to add a bit of refrigerant okay now I have to wait a bit that the system cools down again let it pump all the gas inside here and the evaporator to do the job Okay, I'm back to negative 50. I'm going to do the same stress test again. Seems a bit better since we are now 29, 28. Before it was like 17. So we need to push it a bit more. Okay, now we are at negative uh, 44, 5.3 all core, 1.5 uh, V core. And I start again the Cinebench R20. So far seems pretty fine, so we drop a bit, or 5 degrees, so it should stay around the negative 40, which is very nice, and we don't have uh, much difference between uh, idle and under load, which is something that I want. I was a bit um, surprised because uh, I didn't expect uh, too much drop uh, from uh, discharge uh, to charge with a lot of gas but anyway negative 40 negative 43 is more than enough for what I'm going to do with this so I have fun and not doing anything close to competition and uh, well seems that uh, 5.3 with AVX and 1.5 volt is a uh, is a nice load and uh, well uh, I just tried 5.4 is not possible the system will crash and uh, now I want to try the single core if I can push 5.5, um, 5.7, I don't know. Let's find out. All right, let's try Super Pi at uh, 5.6. So far, so good. Okay, let's try 5.7. Okay, so 5.6. Okay, let's have some fun. I'm in World of Warcraft. Uh, negative 42 degrees, 5.6 all core. And usually when I'm here, I have like 30 FPS less. What I'm going to do now is to try a benchmark that uh, I know the result for the Ryzen and for the other Intel. Uh, and we see how much we gained. Uh, well, we have the 3090 ping, we are the 1080 ping, so not uh, even close at being GPU limited. So let's try this benchmark and see how is the gain uh, with uh, this amazing like 600 megahertz increase. Okay, 
I'm a bit disappointed since uh, we gain like uh, three or four FPS uh, versus uh, five gigahertz. So I guess that the frequency now is not the main bottleneck, it's probably the memory. It seems that uh, with extreme cold, I was able to push uh, the gear one frequency from 3033, uh, 3333 at uh, 3600 MHz. So with extreme cold, I was able to push more the memory controller. This is something that is normal. So usually when we go cold on Intel, the memory controller will allow you a bit more overclocking frequency. So now I'm going to repeat the benchmark, doing exactly the same thing, same clock, 5.6 gigahertz, and see by uh, raising the memory if we now finally have some FPS gain. Now, this is what I'm talking about. So now, uh, if you recall the previous number, we was at uh, 227 on average and 176 1% uh, uh, loads. Now we have like a 20% increase just by raising the frequency to 3300 MHz, 33 to 3600 MHz. So uh, with a step in memory overclocking, same frequency, insanely high, but same frequency, we gain a lot of FPS. So the memory was the bottleneck. All right, seems that uh, 3600 MHz uh, gear one is uh, as far as we can go with this setup, but uh, still very interesting to know that uh, uh, the RAM is a very big bottleneck and even pushing 600 MHz more in frequency, uh, there was almost no change. So I know how to focus now to, to squeeze a bit more this chip and I will make some other interesting tests like this. So yeah, let me know what you think uh, if I do some uh, like episodes of uh, extreme gaming and stuff like a bit out of the ordinary. Uh, let me know in the comment section. Well, for today is everything. I think uh, I can call it a day. It was a nice day. I fixed the, the face change. We discovered something new about the memories. Um, well, uh, I will keep testing in the next days, uh, do crazy stuff like this. So like the video if you like it, subscribe if you want to see more and see you in the next one.